Ah, uh, hello, hello, hello. It is Farmer Ben here, um, once again on a lovely, slightly rainy day in Wales, and today we are at war. Bum, 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 bum. War. Now, unfortunately, uh, one thing within our alliance, and I've noticed this a lot, is we keep dropping into wars. Um, I don't really know how it, how this is happening. I mean, literally, we're, we're constantly at war with somebody. All I can assume is that our alliance leader is just picking fights with other people for no reason. It seems like, you know, twice a week, I reckon we are in a new war. I mean, it, it's, it's horrible. I mean, why can't we all just get along? Anyway, so moving swiftly on from my uh, pacifist, pacifist leanings, we are at war and... Alliance Wars are one of the elements of the game which have become increasingly popular since they first came out. Uh, when they first came out, I remember a lot of people were like, mm, I'm not sure about Alliance Wars, there's a lot of effort. The loot was very bad, and the arrow attack, which was the only attack at the time, uh, the only defence at the time, was horrendously powerful. So it was one of these things that people were like, mm, I don't know about Alliance Wars. And a lot of people hadn't built up teams, so you, most people only had sort of one strong team instead of four or five, which is the way a lot of people have gone now. So we've got a lot more stronger teams. And... Over time, strategy and tactics have developed. So, as you can see here, my alliance is Pinky in the Brain, uh, the mighty Pinky in the Brain. We try and take over the world every night. Same thing we do every night. Uh, on the other side, we have a Polish alliance, um, a Polish alliance called Rogate Zuse. Um, I know that they are Polish because they have that red and white flag. I have personally got nothing against the Polish people. They are lovely people. Uh, I went, I have been to Poland. True story, true story. Um, I went to a the Czech-Polish border. Um, I was staying in the Czech Republic at the time in about 1996, 1997. And I walked up to the border of Poland uh, on the, where there's a mountain called Śnieżka. And I walked across the border uh, just far enough to say that I've been to Poland. But that's about my only experience of Poland, really. Anyway, enough waffling. Now, to start with, we're going to be talking about strategy today. Strategy um, being the overarching aims of your whole alliance, which is really, really important uh, because the, one of the main things and one of the most exciting and popular things about Alliance Wars is it's not a one-person thing. It's all about working together. And working together is crucial. Um, if you want to win an alliance war, it doesn't. You have to sort of be a little bit selfless. You have to remember your whole alliance needs to work together to come up with strategies that are going to help you. Uh, the second part of the video will be looking at tactics. Tactics being the more refined element of trying to win raids uh, or re win war raids. Anyway, so. Here we have our team. Uh, if we go into the battlefield, you can see the war has already started. It's been running for a little while. Uh, there are some pretty uh, strong enemies on our red side there. So we've got some pretty strong enemies. And you've got our alliance down here at the bottom, our blue team, with me there, sort of centre, uh, just behind Ral Shah, who is our mighty leader. Uh, all hail Ral Shah. All hail. Um, I can see, because there are a lot of red dots, there's not very many players online at the moment. The brain is online. Kimul is online, the mighty Kimul. Kimule, sorry, you did tell me I hadn't pronounced the name right. Kimule. So, and Kimule has, Kimule has done some very good attacks. She has hit Roberto, knocked him for six, and she's weakened a couple of other teams, which is great. So I can see, to start with, the war has begun. We are obviously losing at the moment, but it's very, very early days, and it doesn't really mean a colossal amount that we are losing at the moment. Uh, we've got a few players who've opted out of wars, and that is quite important as well. Um, if you have players who are away, it's a real benefit to have them opt out of wars altogether because they then don't count towards the matchmaking. So if you've got players who know they're not going to be taking part in wars, get them to opt out. Uh, it's okay to miss wars. We, we are a very, we're a fairly loose alliance, but we do expect that if you do miss them, you opt out so that you don't put us at a disadvantage, essentially. So... This is our team, and as you can see when you look at our team, we have coordinated our tanks. Now, our alliance strategy has been to coordinate tanks so that we have a range of tanks of either blue, so you can see here's my team in the middle there, with Asania. I'm going to have to zoom in, but uh, above me is Ral Shah. She's got blue, she's gone for Kirill. I've got another Asania to my left. Um, thorn to my right. So some of us have gone with blue. Now what we found was that some of our of our team did not quite have a blue hero who was strong enough. 
Um, so we gave an option that you could also have a purple hero. Uh, we found, we thought about it a lot. We felt that some people in the Alliance would end up putting in a very weak tank, a very weak central hero, if we did insist on blue. So we have opted for we have opted for this choice that you can go blue or purple. Most people have gone blue, but a few have gone purple. Now the reason for doing this, most people have come to realise this, is that if you have a, a tank, by and large the tank is going to be the one hit with most of the tiles in the first few moves of any raid. Um, so we have selected our so ideally what you often want to do is to attack with one or two or even three sometimes more heroes of the color that is strongest against the tank um, we have opted for blue and purple in the hope that our enemies will then start running out of green and yellow heroes who are the ones who are strongest against blue and purple meaning that in the second part of the war we will have an advantage because it's harder for them to color stack uh, against our tank to hit our tanks hard so that is one of our strategies now another strategy we have is that we have been developing quite a bit that our team is split uh, within our alliance we have some very very strong players uh, we have some fairly strong players and we have some players who are growing in strength so they are all coming along well we are very pleased with everyone in our alliance well done my alliance Ooh, hello everyone you're doing really well um, so they are coming on but they are currently not at a position where they can field six or five uh, full teams in a war so they have a few teams that become what we call sweeper or cleanup teams uh, so the stronger players uh, will only will try to only hit uh, whole teams and then our weaker players are hopefully learning uh, to sort of stay back and wait for opportunities to present themselves so they can capitalize on points remembering that it is not all about uh, just being an individual. Now, if I look at the enemy team opposite me, I can see that Philip has been weakened. So I, what I could do is click on Philip, and I could go, oh, there's Philip, right, he's lost two heroes, so his team power is probably down to about 2,000, 2,400. If I clicked on attack Philip, I could autofill, and I could hit him with a team with 4,000 team power. Well, that's a terrible use of a really strong team. There's no point in me using one of my strongest teams to finish off somebody who is already weakened. It makes sense to leave them for somebody else to pick up with a team that is less powerful. Um, now, Rigard obviously is quite a dangerous hero for somebody, but one of our team, one of our sweepers, should be able to pick them off, and that's really important. Now, there was a video some time ago by Anchor 7 dd may he rest in peace. Um, Anchor 7 dd uh, uh, promoted the idea that one of the first things you should do is always try and reset your opponent. Uh, reset your opponent's teams by wiping them all out so that the board resets. Uh, it may work for the strongest teams, but it can be overemphasized. We've had this discussion a lot. Our general, our war leader is Fester. Now, where's Fester's team? There's Fester in the top left. Now, Fester is our war leader. He has become our general. It was a role which we decided uh, some time back that we needed somebody to coordinate everybody else in wars, to really sort of push people, to remind them to use all their flags, to get stuck in. And I should say that is really important, uh, a comment I made there. If you are in an alliance where a lot of people are not using their flags in wars, if you have a lot of flags left over and a lot of players not hitting, then you need to get yourself into a better alliance if you actually want to win the wars. Uh, the, the matchmaking within wars is decided by uh, the teams that are there. It doesn't look... It does look a little bit at your previous history of wins and losses, but the thing that will really make the big difference is that everybody is getting stuck in. And one of the great things about Pinky and the Brain is that we do get stuck in, and as such, we are often winning wars against alliances, which we think we should lose. It's just that we use all of our flags, which just gives us that slight edge. Using your flags is crucial. Now, going back to the point I was just about to make, uh, Fester, our mighty war leader, all hail Fester, bomb, all hail. Um, he has got many good ideas, and one of his ideas, and he's, he, we've talked about it quite a lot, is that resetting your opponents is not always the first priority. Uh, within the first part of the match, they, they reset relatively quickly anyway. Also, by attacking them and hitting all the teams and knocking them all out, if you do that, but you haven't got any flags left on your side, if you've got nobody with any flags left to use, then there's no advantage to resetting them. You don't get points for the reset itself. You only get points 
um, for knocking for knocking out teams. So the reset then opens up the weaker teams so that you can knock out the weaker teams and get more easy points, but it doesn't earn you any points in itself. So there's often no great reason to go, right, I'm gonna wipe out everyone dun, 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 in one massive rush attack at the start. Now, in many ways, it's actually more effective. If your alliance is in the position to do a rush attack, do it in the second half or um, yeah, the second half is probably the better one because then everybody has the full amount of flags. So save your flags and then go in with one massive attack, which hopefully knocks out all the all of the teams in one go, leaving you then with plenty of flags to capitalize on your reset. That is a better way. Now, it might be that teams like uh, Seven Days Departed and all these things that Anchor, may he rest in peace, um, would use. Um, that they have the power to go and do it twice in one go or four times in one one war we can't do that and i imagine there are other teams that are in a similar position to us it is just a little bit on the impractical side so don't view a reset as an a as an aim in itself a reset is only great value if you can make the most of it and to make the most of it you need to have flags spare once the reset is achieved so we are not aiming for a reset but what we do find is that as our alliance is spread all over the world um we have to act uh we, we cannot coordinate one massive attack which is a strategy that some alliances employ and we've had it used against us it can be quite effective uh, it does need to be managed carefully to do to get everybody in for one huge attack. It can work. It can drive uh, a massively powerful attack, resetting your whole alliance, reset, knocking everybody out of the war when the flags are ready to then capitalize on it, as I mentioned earlier on, to really womp everybody about. Uh, and everyone likes a good whooping and a whomping. Downside for us is that we are a very international alliance. Uh, I love that we are an international alliance. It is great. We have players spread across the world, uh, but it does mean that coordinating all of us is very difficult. We have people in a lot of different time zones. Uh, and I love that. I do love that. It's one of my favorite things about the game is that I can talk to people all across the globe. Um, so I do love that element of it. Anyway, so I think those are our main tactics. So as I say, Coordination of central tanks is crucial. Um, planning your attacks, uh, giving people a role of either a whole team attacker or a, a sweeper, a cleaner upper of damage that's already been done. Uh, that's a secondary role, so you want two different roles for each for your teams, and it depends on the team strength. So you play to people's strength. You you encourage people not to attack teams that are weak. So you have to remember it's a team game. Don't use one of your strongest teams to get the bonus points by knocking out a team that is a little bit weak. There is nothing to be gained by doing that. Uh, you may score yourself more points, but you won't score more points for the Alliance. And even if you are the strongest player on your Alliance, you will get much better loot if your Alliance wins than if you are the strongest player on the losing side. So it's all about teamwork, and it has to be. Uh, we don't work on a reset specifically, but we often will aim for one later on. Once there are more players on and we've got more ability to capitalise on it. Oh, old Ben's off for the attack there. Go, old Ben. Woo, go, old Ben. Go, old Ben. So our team is getting stuck in, and that's great to see. Now, having witted on for a little while, this is time we have a look at our opponents. Now, our opponents, the first thing I notice when I look through their ranks is that they have not coordinated their tanks. Um, I can see at the front here, we've got a yellow one. Uh, I can see red ones. I can see blue ones, purple ones. Uh, they don't have any green tank that I can see. So they haven't coordinated terribly well. Now, hopefully that will play to our advantage. Uh, it should give us an edge when it comes to going into the going into the war as we carry on. In the second half of the war particularly, they will hopefully be running out of heroes that are green to do to do maximum damage to our blue tanks, whereas we will be able to pick and choose our targets and still use more powerful heroes against them. Now, I like to, when I'm doing a war, it is a personal preference thing, but I always like to attack the enemy leader. Um, it's kind of like a, I don't know, Kind of like a little bit of a red flag, you know, like, just come on, yeah, have it, show you some of that. Um, that's my personal belief. 
it's not for everybody's taste, but let's have a look. So here we go. So they are a team. Now, one of the useful things you can do is just click the little enemy info button at the bottom. So you can see the enemy info to help you choose your ta you choose your teams. Now, I know that Guinevere is a pain in the neck. Uh, Guinevere is one of the ho most horrible heroes to fight of all time. Uh, nobody in their right mind likes to take on Guinevere for no reason. Uh, so I never... I, it, I um, I was saying, sometimes when I'm doing raids, I would actively avoid Guinevere because I know she's hard work. But I'm going to risk it today, mainly because I am uh, a great believer, as I say, in going for the enemy tank first. Now, um, what did I, say? I didn't see any green tanks, so I'm going to take an extra strong red hero, which is an unusual choice. I wouldn't normally do that. And I will take... Hmm, boom, 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 boom. One other hero who could be really useful against them. Uh, do, 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 do. So, just to run you through my idea of the heroes, what I have got is I've got two snipers. That's my uh, Moyana and Domitia. They are my two snipers. I also have Sabina, who is my healer. She's also, more importantly, in many ways, my debuffer, so she can remove the special skills. I have Tybertus, whose attack will weaken my opponents, so I have got a range of heroes. Even though I'm colour stacking, so in colour stacking using three purples, I want to consider the strengths of my heroes. Um, so what I probably want now is either somebody who hits everyone... Or some kind. Uh, let me think. I've got a weakener. I could go with another healer. I'm a bit short of a booster. Uh, boosters are a little bit tricky. I will, because I, I basically haven't got a colossal number of boosters. Um, so what I will do is I'm going to bring in Gadaris as a booster. Um, let me see. A lot of swapping around here. I'm going to put Gadaris between my two purples because they are the ones I want to boost the most. Gadaris only boosts people either side of him. I'm going to keep Sabina as my uh, debuffer and I'm going to go with Mariana as another sniper. So now I have a booster, Gadaris, a weakener, Tibertus, two, two snipers, um, two debuffers because Domitian does debuff as well and... That then hopefully is a reasonable team. Now my team power is quite a bit lower than theirs um, by about by about 300 and something points, which means that they're stronger than me, and it's not going to be an easy raid. But we'll see if I get the right squeen. Get the right squeen. I get the right squeen. If I get the right screen, even I have a good shot. Uh, if I get the wrong screen, then there's no way I would win. Whatever I do, um, basically Guinevere is that kind of hero. It's kind of win or lose. Uh, okay, let's see. So, first thing I'm noticing, obviously I'm going to be wanting to hit Guinevere with as many purples as I can possibly throw at her. I'm going to do, so it's an odd move, I'm going to go for those to try and open up the purples a bit. Let's open them up a little. I don't know if it's going to be enough. I'm going to slide this one in, hit her with another purple. Definitely got a weakening. I don't see at the moment much hope of finishing her off unless I can get in another purple there. Now, I've now got my extra purple, which means that Guinevere, even though I can see her special attack ready, is going to die on the next move. There is no need for me to do anything more because I can just do this and she is gone. Boom. So that's the beauty of colour stacking. Now, it is a risk. Taking three heroes of one colour, you are reliant on the screen being on your side. It's a calculated risk. Guinevere is a nightmare to beat because she, she does reduce the mana of your team. If you're going to beat Guinevere, you need a reasonable screen to do it. Um, somebody in our alliance, if we want to reset them, which hopefully, as I say, eventually we will, uh, has to, to take on that role of defeating Guinevere. It cannot be completely ignored. It would be lovely just if we could find a way around it, but somebody has to step up to the plate. Step up to the plate, be the man of the hour, prove themselves in the war, and all those kind of military-type shenanigans that people love to talk about in any Hollywood movie. Uh, there we go. So, first raid. Hooray! Woo! Go me! Etc, etc. So... Uh, basically there the board was on my side I did play a few strategic moves as you can see to try and open the board up to get me purples 
uh, and that is quite important that you can try to manipulate the board in your favor there's always an element of luck i was lucky there that when i did the, one of those moves up the side in the center it opened up the purple five in the row which gave me quite a strong start now now that i've knocked out a the team with the yellow tank it makes sense to then go and look for another team uh, if I click on find opponent, well, it'll offer me this one. Now, Colo, let's see. I'm reasonably happy to try and take on Colo. Now, Colo, as you can see, has got a red tank in the shape of Cole, uh, Colen. Cohen, I can't remember which one he is. Um, again, good hero, good central tank. Quite dangerous if he goes off. I'm going to be colour stacking my blues. So, blues rise straight away. What I've got is I've got my booster and healer. I have got my weakener in the sense of a Sarnia. I have got a sniper stroke general hitter in the shape of Thorn. Um, what I could still do with is a debuffer. So, debuffer wise, I am going to go with Cademon. Uh, the reason I'm going with Cademon is I don't like to go one colour throughout. I find that very, very dangerous. And I'm going to take one more purple hero, I think. Uh, and I am probably going to go for... Bum, ba -dum, bum, 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 bum. I am going to go for Jabbar to upset any healing. There we go. So let's see how this goes. Now, I haven't mentioned the special attacks that are out on the war. Uh, with this one, it's an attack boost. The attack boost, I find, is, well, is probably the least um, interfering with your general play. Uh, it doesn't do a colossal amount of damage. Uh, it just kind of happens so it's not a big issue now straight away at the start of the game i can see that i've got a five in a row blue off to the right hand side also a five in a row yellow in the center now there's no need really for me to do a five in a row yellow all it would be doing at the moment is feeding the mana so i'm gonna go for the five in a row blue uh it doesn't mean that i've hit the wrong hero really it would have been nicer if those had smashed into uh colen in the center rather than um sabina off there at the edge but hopefully, with a bit of luck and a following wind, Thorn will now finish off Kalen. Boom. And he's taken Sabina as well. I was hopeful that might happen. Wasn't sure if I would have the power there to do it. Um, so, again, a very promising start. Now, I've been lucky that the board has been my friend. Again, there's an element of using the board in your favour. Uh, it's not always as easy or as hard as it can be. Uh, I'm just going to try and... Yeah, there we go, Thorn there, weakened because he was being hit by the greens. I do have a purple, too, so I may as well use that. Um, attack boost has only just kicked in, and it's not going to do Lena any good anymore. The Lena on the other side, well, firstly, she's now dead, but she had no real chance anyway, when she was the only hero left against five of mine. So, there we go, another opponent out, 54 points for me. Woo, go me, yeah, yeah, yeah. Old Ben doing a sterling job as well there. He's knocked out 44 points from one team and is doing a grand job of finish, of picking out some, um, weakening some opponents. There are a lot of dangerous heroes on the other side. So I have one attack left. I'm going to look for another opponent, Sebastian. Well, I'm not going to go for Sebastian. Uh, the reason is not that I'm afraid. Well, I am a little bit. I'm always a little bit afraid. Uh, no, the reason is I'm not going to go for Sebastian because he's got a red tank. No way, uh, having just used up my best blues, that I'm going to try and hit somebody with a red tank. It makes far more sense to go for somebody with a blue tank. So I'm looking around for either a blue or a purple tank. Now, there are no shortage of them. Uh, I could go for Marius. Ooh, very, very strong Mariuses. Uh, look at that, 4,000 team power. I would have to be mad to try and take him on. So let's give it a go. Um, I'm going to go for Liana. She is one of my strongest greens. Uh, I wish, I really wish I still had Gadiris, but I've used him, which is a shame. So I'm going to use Bold Tusk as my booster. Where's Bold Tusk? There's Bold Tusk. Hello. So I've got a sniper and a booster and Kashrek to boost to keep the greens alive in the middle. Melendor, healer and debuffer. And then I just need one more sort of heavy hitting hero. I'm not going to try for a yellow because I'm kind of saving them. Although I could use Chow maybe. Maybe Chow. Um, I could go with Amniona. Amniona's never a big favourite of mine. I'm going to go for Wukong. Uh, Wukong, I find is a bit of a risk in raids. Uh, I do use him and if it goes well, bam, you win. If it goes badly, sometimes it means your heroes miss on their special attacks, and it can be disastrous if you get one at the wrong time. I, as I have mentioned, I like to go with three, um, colour stacking three, one, one. Some people go two, one, one, one. Some people go four, one, or even five heroes of the same colour. So there's lots of strategies. 
Um, in some ways, 2111 is the safest, um, or can be the safest. It's only difficult if you've got a very resilient tank in the center. If you're really struggling to get rid of the tank, it can become a bit of a risk. Uh, the other options, 3-1-1, as I say, my personal preference, I find it gives me a lot of strength against the tank, but a bit of resilience against really bad screens. A little bit, but like anybody else, I can lose on any screen. Uh, four and one, to me, is just take, committing yourself too heavily, as is five heroes of the same color. Uh, some people do it, some people do very well on it, everybody has their own strategies. But my main thing is not only do I want to, ma to marry up the colours, I want to marry up the skills. Which is why, as I say, I have a sniper, a booster, Oh, now I'm looking at it. A sniper, a healer, a booster, I'm going to take Wukong out because what I am short of is another hitter. I need a sniper of some kind. It is very risky to go into a war with only one sort of sniper, one hitter, because often you will have opponents you want to finish off, and snipers tend to have the quickest mana. So I've swapped Wukong. Uh, who knows how this is going to go? We shall see. So we're going to get stuck in. Boom, ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum, up the side. Marius! Marius! So, well, there we go. My screen luck apparently has run dry a little. Although, let's see, I'm going to move, uh, I'm going to create a small combo here. I'm just trying to think which combo is going to be most effective. I'm going to go for this. Let's see how it goes. So the yellows go, the red go. Now that's opened up the greens a little bit. I'm going to move this down. They'll be more effective because it's a combo. Boom, 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 boom. It's not going to be enough to um, stop Richard, which is a shame. I'm going to do this five in a row red here. Ooh, five and a red purple. Well, as I say, off-colour gems, not going to be a massive help for me. But, you know, who knows. Uh, Richard's attack weakens everyone, so I'm going to want to get my healer ready to undo that effect as quickly as I can. Now, my Mariana's going off. Oh, and Leona's dead. Now, Leona dying is really bad news for me. Uh, it doesn't mean I'm going to lose. It just doesn't fill me with confidence. Um, Leona being one of my stronger heroes. She is one of my strongest snipers. It means also now I've got four stars against a team which is entirely made up of five stars. Uh, bum, bum, bum. I've got off-colour diamonds of every type. So let's just blow up the blue one, open up the screen and see what happens. Bit of opening up there. Hmm. Not entirely in my favour, but not entirely awful either. I can see, uh, uh, what's his name? June is about to go off, that's not good news going to just try for this other purple gem <sighs> opened up a load of blues look a load of blues uh blues not being the one i needed today so this is of course the risk of going with 311 you get the wrong screen there's not much you can do uh, and this really is is the wrong screen i've had just so many blues uh, I can't really complain. I've, I've, you know, I've still taken out their central tank. I've performed a role, a service to the alliance, and I have not left myself. You know, uh, I don't feel that I've been cheated. I don't feel like I could should have won it anyway. But a defeat, nonetheless, still a little bit bitter. I've weakened the enemy team though, and that means that that team is now a little bit more open for a um, a week for a sweeper to come in and finish them off. Now Marius no longer has a hero. He didn't have uh, sorry hero, a healer. He didn't have a healer to begin with. So the fact he has got no healer m makes him vulnerable. Any uh, alliance war team should have a healer in it because it is the only. If you don't have a healer, you are giving three points to your enemies. I could hit somebody could hit Marius with a team using only one and two stars and would probably still come away with a point. It may not be very many points, but they won't have all the damage they do undone by the healer. So I would always recommend taking a healer. Now, the last thing I will do as part of this, and this is a big thing, is to communicate. So I will say to my team that something along the lines of, I've managed to weaken Marius. I've, whoop, I've knocked, knock it, I've knocked out Marius's, Marius's tank and whoop, 
Oh, hang on, I'm going to have to move this little little record icon out of the way, because right in the way. I've knocked out Maris's tank, and he, no, he hasn't... I'll do. Hasn't got a healer. Go for it, team. So I want to just sort of let everybody know. And communication is really important. If you open somebody up, let them know. If there's a risk, let them know. Um, sometimes there are certain heroes who are dangerous and not everybody will have experience of fighting them. They may not re see the danger until it's too late. There are heroes like Elkanen who steal back health, who if you hit them with the wrong team with weaker heroes, he can actually end up, you can end up with zero points, uh, which is no good for anyone. So I'm just going to send that message. Uh, well, oh, Sybil's got Melendor. Good. There we go. In the lineup, I was using Sonya. Uh, Sonya's good. Sonya is good. She's, we're talking about the Titan, because at the moment we have a rare Titan that does the repost. Oh, has that sent? No, oh, I didn't send my message. Anyway, I won't make you sit down and watch the, me type out the message again, because I will send it again in a moment. That, then, is my guide, and it is quite long-winded and waffly, as most of my videos are, because I like to talk. I'm a talker. Listening to talkers makes me thirsty, as the hound said. Um, I do like uh, to consider all the options. I'm reasonably pleased with my attack. I suspect that will put me first on the leaderboard. It often does. There we are, 133. I could have done better if I'd want beaten that last uh, that last opponent. I didn't get a screen to do it. But one of the things that's really important to me is I'm not going to edit my videos or change them to show you every attack going well or only put videos on when things are going my way. Um, losing is a very important part of the game and growing from losing is really important too. Anyway, it has been, as ever, it has been an emotional pleasure. Uh, a little roller coaster ride there for us all. And I bid you all a very good day. Remember to subscribe to the videos for more information. Uh, click the little bell thing, which will make you, uh, which will alert you when I've posted a new video. And it just remains to say, may death come swiftly to your enemies.